The tuna jaw is a great arc of meat, curved like a boomerang, its underside all bone and gleaming skin. At Tito Rad's Grill in Woodside, Queens, it's offered in three sizes, which increase in menace. Smoke from the grill has burrowed deep into the flesh, which diners peel off the bone in creamy strips. In the Philippines, this is Inaha Na Ponga, a specialty of the island of Mindanao. Mario Albino, known as Boyad, the chef and owner of Tito Rad's, grew up there, on a farm in Takurong in the province of Sultan Kudara, where his mother ran a carinderia, or small roadside restaurant. Tuna Jo reminds him of going to the beach, playing guitars, booze, he said. I wanted to be a forester, he went on with a sigh. Close to nature. Instead, he followed his mother's lead and cooked, in Manila and then New York, where he opened Tito Rad's in 2006 with his wife, Susan Albino, known as Toti, close to the strip of Roosevelt Avenue called Little Manila. At the time, Filipino food was little known in America outside of immigrant enclaves. Only in recent years has it begun to move into the mainstream, at restaurants like Maharlika in Manhattan, Bad Saint in Washington and Lhasa in Los Angeles, run by second-generation Filipino-Americans unbound by tradition. Their approach to the cuisine of their childhoods is a mix of scholarship, invention, and battle cry. Tito Rad's is a reminder that fine Filipino cooking has been with us all along. For here, as for the last decade, is Yukoi, fritters of shrimp and snared in deep-fried tendrils of bean sprouts and carrots, with club soda in the batter to give it a lift. And immaculate cylinders of Lumpiang Shanghai, often compared to Chinese spring rolls but more slender and delicate, their crispy skins like gilded air. And Tortang Talong, whole eggplant buried in an omelette with only the stem peeking out and the bronzed eggs disclosing seams of pork and shrimp. Sisig, typically a hash of pig face, snout, jowls, ears, is here all pliant pork belly, reduced to juicy rubble, baked and then half charred on a hissing skillet in a lacework of onions, whose sweetness cuts the fat. A rinse of lemon, and the meat arrives still cooking and crackling as it lands on the table, smoke rolling off the hot plate and a raw yolk, on request, trembling at the center. I did Mississippi ears to gnaw on. Alongside that daunting tuna jaw might be caldirtang kaming, goat braised in tomato puree, with green olives leaching brine and liver pate extending its dark mineral contour. More liver pate is loosened with vinegar as a dipping sauce for lechon kawali, hunks of pork belly that emerge from the fryer equal parts shatter, sink, and chew. Ampalaya, or bitter melon, is tossed into a pan of scrambled eggs at the last minute, so it loses none of its color or crunch. It's still defiantly bitter, but with a cooling freshness. Lanka, or jackfruit, is slowly undone by coconut milk, until its texture is somewhere between short rib and potato. Best of all is lying, a tangle of taro leaves, flown in from Hawaii and carefully pruned of their stems, saturated with coconut milk and braised into a soupy, sublime mess. Be warned, for most of the vegetable dishes here, pork and shrimp lie in the depths.